Hey, it's me. I was a little bit spellbound by the music there. It's me, Vicky Marie, with my coffee. So this is my second coffee of the day. I'm a bit late with it this morning. Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Hope you're well. Hope life's treating you well. And if not, I'm thinking about you. I really do. It sounds ridiculous, but uh, sometimes I think I think too much, you know, just oh, I always put positive energy out for anyone who's um, suffering in any way or struggling in any way. And I've already lit the candle today because I did a, vi a video earlier, I did a video about how the pastor killed Micah, in my opinion. Today, in today's video, we're going to look at, uh, but this candle also, of course, is for anyone who is lost, struggling in any sort of way, similar to Micah maybe, feels there's nowhere to turn. There is always somewhere to turn. It's just sometimes you can't see the wood for the trees. But I like the candle for everyone who's lost either physically, like Sebastian Rogers, lost, missing child, or if you're lost emotionally, if you're just lost in life, you know, just know that positive thoughts are going out to you. And I know... It, ultimately, it's our own responsibility to carry on with our lives or to do what we can. You know, um, life is sort of like arrows. It's like arrows are thrown at you day in, day out, aren't they, in life? One, one, as soon as one problem is resolved, another problem comes up. And they could be all sorts of... Um, it could be all sorts of reasons, could be financial, could be a relationship problem, could be problem with your kids, could be drug addiction, could be alcohol abuse. There are so many reasons why we might be lost, either for our own doing even, or for somebody else's doing. Um, and we just, life is a journey and we just have to get on with it, really. Uh, Micah didn't, Micah gave up, didn't she? And we, you know, we don't can't judge people for giving up. Um, it's very devastating for the people that they leave behind. But, you know, I know that when people are in that mood, if you like, or in that frame of mind for whatever reason, they're not really thinking of what they're leaving behind. Though Micah obviously was because Micah took herself off to the woods, to Lumberton State Park. And this is who, let me just put a picture up because I'd like to... Um, a picture up of who we're talking about this is micah micah miller 30 years old no age just coming into the prime of her life never really had a life groomed by pastor john paul from the age of 14 when she was his babysitter and then eventually married him and then when when she decided she didn't want to be in that marriage anymore because she was sick of being used like some uh sort of pastor's wife stepford wives handmaiden's tale type dystopian nightmare when she had the cheek to actually want to live a life for herself he started making a life of misery and that culminated in micah not being able to carry on anymore going to the lumber uh, state park um lumberton state park and phoning the police to make sure that they knew where she was so that her family would be able to find her that's something she thought about her family because imagine her being missing for weeks and then eventually found that would be even worse, of course. Uh, you know, nothing's a good scenario in this case. But that leads me to the topic of this video. So it came to my attention um, that, you know, uh, the fishermen, because what happened was, uh, apart from the 911 call that Micah herself made, to say where she was so the police were sort of galvanized into responding there was a fisherman there on that day at that time it was sort of i think it was sort of a late afternoon wasn't it time um and he heard somebody crying he heard the shotgun and then he found uh, allegedly found micah's belongings on the river bank and Micah was in the river, so, um, yeah, I'm not sure whether she did that on purpose. So, you know, if, if she didn't dive the gunshot wound, then she would 
drown or was it to clean you know i who knows who knows exactly what she did and where she did it but anyway so this fisherman found her belongings now he has now suffered from lots of social media abuse whether they think he should have done something when he heard someone crying uh just seems very unfair to me because he just happened to be there and i'm sure michael wouldn't want uh nasty you know michael was such a nice person she definitely wouldn't have wanted any nastiness going out to this fisherman so let's just watch this video and um let me know what you think uh so he's been interviewed and he's told the story of what happened he was there fishing He's heard these noises, he's, but he couldn't see anything. So remember, it was very faint what he heard, and there were trees coming up, which we're going to have a look at the actual uh, environment to give us an idea in this um, video. Let's have a look. Reported hearing Micah crying and the sound of a gunshot at that state park sharing how his character is now under attack. He says it's destroying his life and he wants the baseless attacks that he's seeing on social media to stop. He talked with ABC 15's Tanya Brown. She joins us now live from the Robinson County. I just want to say, so apparently he heard a crime. I don't know what he was supposed to do. Uh, maybe people are thinking that he could have done something or, you know, I don't know. But it just seems unfair because he just happened to be there. It was nothing to do with him, really. County Sheriff's Office in Lumberton. Andrew, the fisherman says he never thought fully cooperating with the police investigation and telling the whole truth and nothing but the truth would lead to him being unfairly targeted on social media. I met 50. Yeah, so he's fully cooperated with the police, but of course, you know, he could have just gone off you know and not said anything and just thought oh don't want to get involved here you know a lot of people do think that don't they they don't want to get involved uh but let's see what he's got to say bless him five-year-old johnny jacobs today at an undisclosed location in robinson county he didn't want me to show his face because he's concerned for his safety after being bashed and targeted on social media it's like imagine that though you know you sort of you've Find, this is why sometimes people don't like to get involved. You know, you find something like he found her belongings, he's handed them over to the police, he's given the police a full statement and thought, oh, well, you know, that's it. He's, a, he's an involuntary witness, isn't he? I mean, he, he, didn't, he went off fishing that day, wasn't expecting uh, that to happen. And as I say, I think Michael would be very upset knowing that he, he had been harassed by this because she definitely wouldn't have wanted that put my life in danger with some of the things that's been said. Jacobs tells me he'd been fishing for several hours on April 27th at the Lumber River State Park when he heard a faint cry. He says two or three minutes later, he heard a gunshot. I said, oh my God, don't tell me. Don't tell me because the crying had stopped. I said, don't tell me something's happened. Don't tell me something. I was getting ready to get out of there. Another three people came into the lake on a boat and I played. Yeah, I, I mean, that was quite traumatic for him. Now, it just does amaze me why anyone would attack anyone in the sense of like this. I wouldn't uh, even John Paul. And you know what I think of him is an absolute twomp. But I wouldn't dream of uh, sending him a personal message saying, oh, you are this or you are that. And, you know, and he's he's the one that I genuinely think is responsible for Micah's death. But uh, this poor guy who just happened to be there fishing, he's got nothing to do with anything. Why would anyone target him? Well, come on, what you people, what's wrong with you? I asked them, I said, did y'all hear that gunshot? They said yes. Jacob says he couldn't see anything because of all the trees blocking his view. This here's the, uh, the the park, of course. This is where I put my boat in at. He showed me a map on his phone of the Lumber River State Park to better show his location on the river that day. Along, you see how thick the woods are. That's why come I couldn't see nothing. So right along in here is where I found Micah's belongings at. 
He says he found Micah's backpack, glasses, and cell phone on the bank and gave them all to deputies on scene. He says he didn't know Micah and has no reason to lie to police. Johnny Jacobs wants the unfair targeting against him to end. I want this to stop as far as me. I don't want to make this all about me because I'm still thinking about Micah. I'm trying to respect her family. And I, I got total respect for them, and I, and I am so sorry for what they're going through. I never thought my day would turn out like that. The Robinson County medical examiner has also been bashed on social media for how he ruled Micah's death as a suicide. Now, the North Carolina State Medical Examiner's Office, I reached out to them today to get information on if an autopsy was done on Micah's body, and I am still waiting to learn that answer. Live in Lumberton, Tanya Brown, a well, of course, since then, they have released, um, you know, the, her, more or less the call that she made saying that she was going to do it. I don't think there's much doubt that she did do it herself in that sense. As you know, I think she was probably driven to it just as surely as if John Paul Pastor had, had, had shot her and I hope he receives charges for unlawful killing or something. Um, but I think, um, you know, she did ultimately do it to herself. But there's more to come on this case, I think, a lot more. BBC 15 News. Tanya, thank you. Now, today we also learned that the Solid Rock Church reported receiving, quote, harassing messages on social media in the days following Micah Miller's death. Now, the report was filed last Wednesday by that, a female. Sorry, said a church of love. Right, where is it? I'll just go back. A church of love. Yeah, love of money, as far as your pastor is concerned, I think. I don't think it's a church of pure love. Death. Now, the report was filed last Wednesday by a female pastor there, and police noted the messages were vague, but mentioned canceling the church for its, quote, lies. Myrtle Beach police concluded at the time no harassment had occurred, we reached out to the church for comment about this. No one has answered. Okay, so yeah, no comment from the church. Hmm. Uh, I think that church is going to end up getting a change of name, don't you think so? I don't think he'll be back there anytime soon. I mean, he'll pop up again. Listen, you know, uh, he's not, no, I don't know if you know the expression, it's not very nice, but this turd won't flush. That is John Paul. He'd be back being a pastor, doing something. He'd just wait for the fuss to die down. That's why I hope that there are charges and the fuss never dies down. You know, he's just, you won't keep someone like him down. Uh, anyway, that's his money source. Anyway, that's where he, all that manipulation of funds out of gullible people who want to believe in God and who are probably very good people, um, you know, giving their funds to someone like him. But anyway, uh, that's their choice. It's their money. They decide what they do with it. But hopefully they see him a bit more for what he is now. Um, yeah, I think there's more to come. Will the family file a, a, a lawsuit, an unlawful death? Will the police? You know, because the police aren't happy with him. You can see that. You know, there's something there. It just depends if they feel they've got enough of a case. They've got to have a case that they can take to the Crown Prosecution Service, haven't they? So, um, you know, it's not as easy as just us saying, you know, me saying, oh, yeah, he's def <laughs> he definitely drove her to it. You know, they need more than that. Now, you know, we saw in a previous video, there's been, they'll have charge of uh, Mika's phone now. So they'll have all the messages. Oh, apparently he tried to get in the apartment. He tried to go to her apartment and get get things out of her apartment and luckily the uh you know the owner if you like of the apartment would not let him have access thank god for that uh because he's still going around saying he's her husband well he is her husband they're not divorced yet she's filed for divorce but they're not divorced yet so technically he is her next of kin so he you know Luckily, thank God, the owner of those at that apartment block did not let him in, said he wanted the police to be there. Good for him or her. I'm not sure if it's him or her, but 
thank God for that, you know, because you can't just let people in. Imagine he'd be there, he'd be taking away anything that he thought might have anything incriminating against him on it. Uh, anyway, so the police will have a lot of things in their possession um, and they'll be going through all that and maybe that will mean that if not an actual, you know, if the law enforcement can't take out the action, uh, if the parents then get that information, they can take out a civil action against him. You should not get away with this. You should not get away scot-free, you know, the more I think about that uh, announcement that he made in his sermon, he was happy that she'd done it. He's glad, you know, he's almost, you know, been cracking jokes all through the sermon. He waited till the end of the sermon to make the announcement. You know, he'd, just, he'd been really upbeat in the, through his sermon that he'd done. He doesn't care. He's glad. That's a problem. Problem removed for him. Doesn't have to worry about what she's going to say about him. He doesn't have to worry that she might end up meeting someone else and he's got to live with the fact, imagining her with somebody else, even though she's had to put up with the fact he's had somebody else for years. You know, so all those problems have just gone. He may even have insurance on her. You know, the uh, oh, all the, uh, the alimony claims have gone. Everything's gone. So, unfortunately... Micah did do him a favour by doing that. Uh, um, but I'm sure she was sort of beyond thinking about that. She just couldn't stand things any longer. She just, Micah, some people are not uh, built to be, you know, they're not strong enough to cope with all that nastiness. He's strong enough because he's some sort of sociopath. He doesn't feel guilt or stay up at night. He's up at night doing his sermons. He's not up at night wondering if Micah's okay. He's what well, he might be up at night thinking when can he next put a tracking device on a car or where's he gonna what more can he do to her? But he's not up at night worrying about other people. That's not the sort of person he is. All that matters is him and that was as clear as anything when he asked his congregation to pray for him and his kids. And he didn't even ask them to pray for Micah when he announced her death. Terrible. Okay, so remember to live and love wisely, carefully. I'll see you real soon in the next video. And we're going to just play out with a little bit of music and the photo, a couple of photos of Micah, just to remember her. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you really soon in the next video. And until then, may your God always go with you. Bye.